Hey guys, welcome back to the Holder Heck channel. I know it's been about, um, I don't know, like a year since I've cared about World of Warcraft. I'm sorry, Burning Crusade wasn't great, we all know that. And even if you thought it was great, you're wrong. So Wrath is coming out, and I, in my infinite wisdom, have decided to make another YouTube video. And this YouTube video is going to be going over literally all the changes, the specs, the talents, the glyphs, the spells, the rotation, everything you could ever possibly want to know for the Enhancement Shaman. The text document, the Google document, and all of my resources are also going to be listed down below. Welcome back. What are my new spells? That's a great question. Uh, moving into Wrath, our rotation changes immensely, our spells change quite a bit. Uh, basically everything we do as Enhanced changes uh, a ridiculous manner, so let's just go over a lot of the new spells and I'll explain to you what they do, starting with Lava Burst. Uh, Lava Burst is a big beefy ranged fire spell with a 2 second cast time and an 8 second cooldown. It is guaranteed to crit if your target has the Flame Shock debuff. Uh, this has some uses in PvP. It has virtually no use whatsoever in a PvE situation. It does absolutely truck people though, and it is the bread and butter for elemental shamans to send people to the astral plane. Um, if you are trying to be that guy and you want to make two-hand DPS viable, then you could use Lava Burst uh, to weave it like a lightning bolt in between your swings, but generally speaking, we're not going to be messing with Lava Burst too much as enhancement uh, in PvE. Moving on, we have Hex. Hex is our first super hard CC. That's right, super hard. It's a super hard CC. Um, it's basically better than sheep because you can hit them and it's great and i love it and we should have had it two expansions ago wind shear is the replacement kick they took the kick off of earth shock and gave us a whole new spell uh, the best part about wind shear is it isn't tied to earth shock anymore meaning you can use your shocks for whatever you want uh, and it's also off the gcd so all in all massive improvement our Cure Disease, uh, Cure Poison, and our Disease Cleansing Totem and Poison Cleansing Totem have been replaced with Cure Toxins and Cleansing Totem. Uh, cure Toxins is better in basically every way because it replaces Cure Poison and Cure Disease at the same time. So it's just one button for both spells, which is great. Unfortunately, Cleansing Totem, although it is better in, in some ways because it does cleanse diseases and does cleanse poisons, uh, it doesn't do them instantaneously upon drop anymore, so you really have to take that into account when using it. One of the biggest quality of life changes we get is going to be the Call of Elements, Call of the Ancestors, and Call of Spirits. This lets you set up four totems on one bind to drop at the same time. So you can have a set for PvP, you can have a set for PvE, you can have a set for AoE, and they're automatically all four dropped at the same time as long as they are off cooldown and you have mana. It is absolutely incredible, and uh, it just feels so good to press one button and see four totems drop. With the new spells out of the way, now we have a lot of changes to our old spells. Uh, the biggest one being that all totems are now raid-wide. Big Boy Fire Nova Totem is no longer a totem, it's a spell. So if you drop Fire Elemental or Magma Totem or Searing Totem, you press Fire Nova as a spell and a Fire Nova originates from that Fire Totem. Now, Threat is also applied to you, so you don't have to worry about dropping Fire Nova and then having some random-ass mob or person you're fighting walk over and kill the Fire Nova before it goes off. Um, next change, Strength of Earth Totem now gives both Strength and Agility, Grace of Air. Uh, we loved you so, so much. You were the best. Don't let anybody tell you any differently, but you're dead now. Stoneclaw Totem slept on. I've been talking to people in stream about this uh, that didn't even know that this worked this way. But Stoneclaw Totem provides a 1100-ish uh, damage shield to your totems. So GG Totem Stomping Macros. Uh, I'm glad that you were used by bad players. Um, it can also be glyphed, which it should be. 
uh, to give you a 4340 bubble when you cast it. So Stoneclaw, pretty goaded uh, and slept on as of today, but probably not after you've seen this video. Flame Tongue Totem is completely reworked. It provides 144 spell power and healing, and it is still completely useless. Wrath of Air is completely reworked. It provides 5% spell haste. Wind Fury Totem also completely changed to provide anywhere between 16 to 20% melee haste with a talent. Earth Shock no longer interrupts spells, as we were talking about earlier with the Wind Shear mechanic, although now it does provide a 10% attack speed slow debuff. Flame Shock uh, now lasts 18 seconds. Uh, dots in Wrath benefit from Spell Haste, so that's pretty nice. Um, so if you're Bloodlusting, uh, the ticks will come every 2.3 seconds, and the debuff will be up for 14 seconds. So this kind of affects your rotation in a big way, and it's going to change depending on how much haste you have. So um, you're never really going to get super comfortable with your rotation. You're going to have to be on top of this 55-button whack-a-mole that we'll get to later. Flame Tongue Weapon now increases your spell power by 211 and spell crit by another 2% with a glyph. The new effect and the glyph crit stack, meaning you can have double if both main hand and offhand have this imbue. Um, the real funny thing about Flame Tongue is that it has zero internal cooldown. So if you're using Flame Tongue, Flame Tongue, you're going to have to use a lower rank Flame Tongue on your main hand and a higher rank flame tongue on your off hand. Moving into the new talents and glyphs, um, let's just start off with the new buttons that you can click to change your character. Uh, Earth's Grasp increases the health of Stoneclaw Totem by up to 50%, the radius of Earthbind by up to 20%, and reduces the cooldown of both by up to 30%. This is a super powerful PvP talent, and it is also a tanking talent because in the year of our Lord, 2022, there are still Shaman that want to tank, and we still have abilities that draw threat. Wow. Improved Shields replaces Lightning Shield, and that now it affects both Water and Earth Shield, so that's pretty nice. Mental Dexterity increases your attack power by 100% of your intelligence. This is huge for us and dramatically changes our gearing criteria. Now, intelligence is worth even more than strength, um, almost to the point to where if you're getting gear that has strength on it, it's probably bad. Frozen Power causes targets affected by your Frost Brand to take additional damage from your spells, and it can also root sometimes with a Frost Shock. Uh, this is a great PvP talent, and it has some uses in leveling as well. Static Shock gives your melee attacks a chance to hit with Lightning Shield, and it also increases the amount of charges Lightning Shield has. This is very, very good for PvE. Lava Lash is an active ability on a 6 second cooldown that deals 100% of your offhand damage as fire and an additional 25% of your offhand damage if that offhand is enchanted with Flame Tongue. Um, unfortunately, Lava Lash is not a great spell in Wrath for us. It is a filler ability that you're going to press if you have literally nothing else to press. That being said, it is pretty nice to have a filler ability, and you would still spec into it. It isn't completely worthless. Improved Storm Strike gives a chance up to 100% that your Storm Strike will give you 20% of your base mana. After accounting for the cost of Storm Strike, this is a net return of about 550 mana. It's super helpful for every aspect of play except single target raid DPS, but single target raid DPS uh, is not the entire game, so it's still pretty good to put a point or two in here. Earthen Power causes your Earthbind Totem to break roots on you and your party, as well as increasing the magnitude of your Earthshock debuff by 10%. Pretty good as well. Now we get to Maelstrom Weapon. Um, this is the cornerstone of enhanced play, and it is the thing that is going to separate the mediocre from the great. Being able to properly manage and utilize your Maelstrom weapon stacks is going to just differentiate the average player from the absolute best of the best. And you're going to see such a variance in parsing and skill just due to this one talent. 
Maelstrom Weapon gives your melee attacks a chance at a two proc per minute per talent point to cause the cast time of your next spell to be reduced by 20%, and casting will not interrupt your swing timer. It can stack up to five times, making any spell except for Lava Burst instant cast. This includes healing spells and hex everything. That's where, like, the weird heal hands and, and, and all these other, like, strange hybrid builds can come into play. Enhanced DPS is probably the most complicated in Wrath, specifically due to this talent, as I mentioned before. You can cast any spell with a Maelstrom stack between 1 to 5, and it will not pause or reset your swing timer. That means if you have enough stacks of Maelstrom weapon, such as the cast time of a spell is less than your swing timer, you can cast the spell between melee swings and not lose a single swing. In a raid setting, you will most likely be casting Lightning Bolt with 3 or 4. This is called Weaving, and it is the most important thing you can do as an Enhancement Shaman to improve your DPS. Feral Spirits lets you summon two spirit wolves that will fight for you. They come with a pet bar, which means they're controlled like a hunter pet. They can receive 30 or 60% of your attack power with a glyph on their auto attacks. They have a short little stun. They grant you 60% movement speed for 15 seconds, and 150% of their melee damage heals you. They can also do a fixated taunt, which is somewhat useful for leveling and maybe dungeon trash, but they will get killed very quickly. Wolves fully benefit from raid aura buffs as well as bloodlust, and continually check your attack power to recalculate their attack power. The best thing to do is just pop wolves and then pop literally every other cooldown you have, and they will adjust accordingly. With changes to old talents, Enhancing Totem now affects both Strength of Earth and Flame Tongue, Ancestral Knowledge increases Int by 2% per point. Elemental Weapons no longer affects Rockbiter or Frostbrand. It increases the spell power given by Flame Tongue instead of its damage, and increases the bonus healing from Earth Living. It still does the same damage increase for Wind Fury, though. Shamanistic Focus is no longer a proc, and it is no longer annoying, and it just does a constant 45% cost reduction to shocks. Anticipation now also reduces disarm duration. Toughness now increases stamina instead of armor. Improved Wind Fury Totem increases the melee haste given by Wind Fury Totem. Uh, this is useful for 5 to 10 man content, or if for some god awful reason you're not playing with a Death Knight. Spirit Weapons now reduces all threat, not just melee threat. This includes spells, heal spells, and buffs. Unleashed Rage is no longer a proc, it's a constant buff, and it also provides the Shaman, not the party or the raid, with three expertise per point, up to nine. Storm Strike is now on an eight second cooldown, and the debuff gives four charges that only you can use. That means no more Elemental Shamans or Dirty Rogues or Hunters taking my Storm Strike debuff. It's pretty great. Shamanistic Rage is now on a one minute cooldown, can be used while stunned, and it is excellent for PvP, uh, but it's also just, you know, pretty great for dealing with mob mechanics. You don't have to worry about, like, do I need mana or do I need to live? You can kind of just constantly be blowing it because it's on a one minute cooldown. As for how you should allocate your talents, uh, the default spec for dual wield DPS will be shown here. Um, there really isn't too much flexibility. Uh, if you always play with a Death Knight with Icy Talons, you can move some points from Improved Wind Fury Totem into Ancestral Knowledge, Improved Storm Strike, or you know, Improved Ghost Wolf if you're feeling fancy. You'll probably be pugging five and 10 mans though, so it's kind of a good idea just to be able to benefit with extra melee haste. Um, if for some reason, again, you're still trying to be that guy and you want to do two-handers, here's a spec for that too. Um, good luck. Good luck. What is my rotation? Oh, dear listener, prepare yourself. We're going to start off with a six step run in and then a priority queue. So on the initial pull, you're going to run in casting flame shock. As you get to the mob, you're going to immediately storm strike 
hopefully there is threat established. Then you drop your totems. Immediately after dropping your totems, you're going to try to um, Lightning Bolt Weave if you got lucky on step two. You're then going to cast Feral Spirits. You are then going to Bloodlust and pop all the actives you possibly can. Obviously, if Bloodlust is not on cooldown, then you just pop everything else. Then you're going to drop Fire Elemental. This will take you about five to seven seconds into the encounter. From there, you're going to follow this specific action priority. Uh, priority number one, you're going to recast Storm Strike for the debuff, not the damage. Meaning you don't necessarily uh, cast Storm Strike on cooldown, but you absolutely cast it ASAP if the debuff is gone. You're going to weave Lightning Bolts as a priority too. If you have Maelstrom Weapon 5, you're going to cast Lightning Bolt immediately. Weaving Lightning Bolt is essentially your highest DPS cooldown. You don't want to waste Maelstrom Weapon stacks just sitting on a Maelstrom Weapon 5. As a number 3 priority, you Storm Strike for damage. If the debuff is still up and you have less than 3 or 4 Maelstrom Weapon stacks, go ahead and recast Storm Strike if it's coming off cooldown. If you have Maelstrom Weapon 3 and you're about to swing again, hold Storm Strike so you can Lightning Bolt immediately after your swing. Number four priority, you're going to recast Flame Shock if the dot is gone. You're gonna to want to avoid clipping the dot, which means casting Flame Shock again before the sixth tick. Uh, don't do that. It's more DPS to use that global cooldown on something else if casting Flame Shock means clipping. So you might not have 100% uptime on the dot and that's, that's fine, it's really fine. As a fifth priority, you're going to recast uh, Magma Totem when it has like, you know, less than 10 seconds remaining. You should have a free global cooldown somewhere in there. Number six, you're going to cast Lightning Shield if it has less than two stacks. Uh, you should have, again, a free global cooldown at some point to do that. Um, as a seventh priority, you would cast Earthshock. As an eighth priority, you would cast Fire Nova. And as a ninth priority, if you have literally nothing else to do, you're gonna cast Lava Lash. Items seven through nine, especially casting Lava Lash, are for when you have a free global cooldown. This happens when Storm Strike is on cooldown, the Flame Shock dot is still up, you've just swung your autos, and you only have Maelstrom weapons zero to two. As you can see, our rotation is ridiculously complicated. There will be weak auras released that help with this, but it still comes down to your reaction times. Enhance and Wrath can be a top tier DPS, but as I've said before, the skill ceiling is astronomically high, and it is one of the hardest specs to play right. Okay, if that rotation is a little bit too hard, um, easier one is you just Storm Strike on cooldown, cast Lightning Bolt with Maelstrom Weapon 5, uh, make sure to Flame Shock right after the dot finishes, then you'll Earth Shock, then you'll Fire Nova, then you'll Refresh Magma Totem and Lightning Shield, and then you'll Lava Lash. Following this basic rotation and trying to occasionally weave those, you know, Maelstrom 4s or Maelstrom 3s, it'll help you stay up in the DPS meters and it'll help you practice to master the correct priority rotation later. Now knowing what totem to drop is, I don't know, maybe a little bit more complicated. With all of your totems being raid wide, you just kind of have to pay attention to what everybody else is bringing and what your buffs do versus what their buffs do and make sure you're not stacking. Cause again, most of these buffs don't stack and uh, dropping two of the same buff really isn't going to help. So let's start off with our earth totems. A strength of earth totem with a 3-3 talent and enhancing totems. This now also provides agility and when talented is better than a death knight's horn of winter. At least one shaman should always take this talent and drop this totem. It's probably going to be you. Stone skin otherwise, which now increases the armor of each raid member by 1200 and stacks with devotion aura and gift of the wild. If you have a restoration or elemental shaman, they should drop this. Tremor is for fights with sleep or fear mechanics, as it always has been. Uh, it is still restricted to your party, and it still probably doesn't work. Because Tremor Totem is the worst 
thing in the entire game. Moving on to Fire Totem, uh, we have our Fire Elemental, the big boy, the hot boy, uh, should be dropped just after you've lusted. This will typically be about five seconds into the raid encounter and gives time for proc-based buffs to activate, giving your Fire Elemental the best chance at getting a juicy snapshot. You can also carry around some spell power gear like we've been doing in Burning Crusade to pre-pop the Fire Elemental and the boss will be pulled to your location. However, uh, due to the changes in stats and wrath from TBC, the gap between a normally popped Fire Elemental and a pre-popped one is really much less dramatic and isn't super necessary. And uh, you also don't have to now convince your main tank to pull the boss to a Fire Elemental. Always a fun struggle. Love you, Brune. Be careful with positioning this totem. Your Fire Nova emanates from your Fire Totem, not the Fire Elemental. So you can usually redrop it if the boss moves and it isn't getting hit by your Nova. Due to its cooldown, you can't do that when Fire Elemental is out. Magma Totem. When Fire Elemental is on cooldown, Magma does more damage and is more consistent than Searing, even on single target in a raid setting. In solo play, you don't want to use it unless there's more than two mobs. A searing Totem, you'd never use this in a raid. It's for single target DPS and solo dungeon play. Flame Tongue, a uh, Restoration or an Elemental Shaman will cover this. You'll never have to worry about it. With Water Totems, Healing Stream is now your default Water Totem for raids. Again, it is restricted to your party. Mana Spring, you'll drop if you don't have enough Paladins for Blessing of Wisdom, as they no longer stack in Wrath, and Blessing of Wisdom is one MP5 more than Mana Spring. Uh, cleansing is obviously for fights with poison or disease mechanics, and this is also restricted to your party. For air totems, you have Wind Fury Totem. Uh, if your raid lacks a Death Knight with improved Icy Talons, which is going to be very rare, since both Blood and Frost take that ability, um, you guys will both be providing, you know, 20% melee haste, but it doesn't stack. So if you don't have to drop Wind Fury, it saves you two talent points and you can always drop Wrath of Air. Wrath of Air now provides 5% spell haste to your whole raid, is a unique shaman buff, and no other class can bring it. It stacks with Moonkin and Retribution Paladin haste buffs, so it's pretty nice. For gearing and stat priorities and gems and all of that, it's a very nebulous topic, so I just want to hit the bullet points. The main thing you're going to be noticing with gear is the massive changes to how attack power works for us. No longer are we focusing on gear with strength, as strength only provides one attack power per point in Wrath, and it provides no other benefits where agility and intellect, because of mental dexterity, now provide one attack power per point, as well as numerous secondary benefits. That means your gear is going to be very agility and intellect heavy, while virtually ignoring strength altogether. Beyond those two main stats, you're also going to try to get to the hit soft cap, which should be very easy to do, as it is only 8%, you want to get to the expertise cap of 140 rating. That's why the 3-3 Unleashed Rage talent is super good. After you hit those two caps, you're going to try to get to the spell hit cap of 17%. Beyond those main gearing priorities, you're going to have the hit hard cap, haste, crit, spell power. All of these things are going to be in an equivalency chart, and it's also automatically plugged into the enhancement simulator. So that means the easiest way to do any of this is just to sim it. You'll put your gear, you'll put your group composition, you'll put your enchants and your gems onto this character, and then if any piece changes, you can plug in the new piece, and it'll tell you if it does more or less DPS in your current group or raid setting. It's not infallible because it does not take into account improper play or other people in your raid not doing their job, but in a bubble where everybody does what they're supposed to do, it can definitely tell you what piece of gear is better versus which piece of gear is worse. This is why things like a pre-raid bis or a phase one bis and lists and videos like that are somewhat pointless now 
but I will list the general consensus for a pre-raid bis below and a phase one bis as well, if you like looking at those things, because I know a lot of people do. The gems you're going to be using are going to be gems to reach expertise cap and then gems to hit the spell hit cap. Your meta gem will be a relentless. For enchants, you're going to have berserking on both weapons. Hopefully speaking, you're going to be an engineer, so you can put a flex weave underlay on your back, hyperspeed accelerators on your hands, nitro boosts on your feet, and a frag belt on your waist. If we get into glyphs, glyphs are a new uh, sub mechanic in Wrath of the Lich King. They let you do some cool things to your major abilities and some cool things to some minor abilities. Um, for PvE DPS, you're probably going to be running Glyph of Feral Spirit, Glyph of Stormstrike, and either Glyph of Flame Tongue Weapon or Wind Fury Weapon, depending on whether your main hand is a physical damage dealer or a spell damage dealer. If you really want to sweat as much as possible, you're going to be carrying stacks of glyphs and cycle which ones you're using depending on what you are doing. So again, pre-popping fire elemental, you'll make sure you have the fire elemental glyph active. And so, you know, you have an AOE set and a single target set. Um, yeah, you can, you can still be very sweaty in Wrath of the Lich King. The minor glyphs are not super impactful and your water shield's pretty good. And uh, you know, like the, water walking one is fine but the minor glyphs are just you know that's left up to your own whatever whatever you really want to do moving into the weapon imbues and weapon speeds you're going to be using wind fury flame tongue or flame tongue flame tongue uh gone are the days of wind fury wind fury r.i.p um, you're always going to be using max rank flame tongue on your offhand. If you have a spell power main hand, which will probably only be happening in Nax, um, you can use flame tongue nine on it. If you have a physical DPS main hand, you're going to use wind fury. Uh, I believe I spoke earlier uh, on why you'd be using mismatched flame tongue ranks. Essentially, flame tongue doesn't have an internal cooldown between ranks, so you'd use flame tongue nine on the main hand and flame tongue ten on the off hand to maximize your quote spell hands quote damage. Now moving into staggering and weapon speed, we're going to be aiming for the same kind of weapon speeds we were looking at in Burning Crusade. Having two slow weapons just makes it a lot easier to be able to weave in those lightning bolts. If you were swinging around really fast ones, not only are you going to be eating flurry charges, but you're also going to basically have to wait until Maelstrom Weapon 5 to lightning weave, which is not ideal. So yes, you're going to be getting two slow weapons and you will not be using double wind fury. You don't need to stagger those weapons anymore, but you do need to sync them. I'll be listing a couple macros here that you can easily copy to help you do that. As for consumables this time around, it's a lot easier. Um, you're swapping major glyphs uh, like we were talking about earlier for maximum sweat. But beyond that, you're going to be using the Flask of Endless Rage, which is optimal at all times. Uh, there's also the Elixir of Mighty Thoughts, which is 45 intelligence. Uh, it's a pretty good Guardian Elixir since it also gives attack power. Uh, you'd pair this with a Wrath Elixir for 90 attack power or a Guru's Elixir, uh, plus 20 all stats. Every other Elixir is situational, uh, you know, to reach hit cap or expertise cap or whatever your gear raid, whatever, whatever you need, really. Uh, and then for food buff, you're just going to do the old Fish Feast, 80 attack power, 46 spell power every time. And if you don't got that one, the Mega Mammoth Meal for 80 attack power. There is also hidden expertise food, you know, if you need it. Uh, potions, which are restricted to once per fight in Wrath. Uh, you're basically only ever going to use Potion of Speed for single target encounters. You'll probably want to bring a lot of Runic Mana Injectors as an Engineer or Runic Mana Potions. Uh, use that on Trash and a Combat Break. It'll induce a one minute cooldown. 
Uh, we're going to be extremely thirsty popping Fire Nova on cooldown. I think that's going to be it for the basic overview video, guys. We got your new spells, your old spells, your new talents, your old talents, talents that did not change, talents that did change, glyphs, pre-patch talents, what totems to use, what your rotation is, the easy rotation, your imbues, your weapon speed, your consumes, your gems, your caps, your sim. Probably going to be making separate videos specifically about the rotation. I hope you guys have really enjoyed this video. It has taken a long time to put together. So I hope you appreciate it. I hope you utilize it. And as always, if you have any questions, you can catch me streaming on Twitch. Even if you catch one of my workout streams, guys, listen, it brings me so much joy to confuse people in the health and fitness category with talk about World of Warcraft. They are there to learn how to make their biceps bigger. We are here to learn how to make our parses gold. Damn, I don't have a better way to end the video. You guys have a good one. I'll see you soon. Bye bye I think that's going to be it for the overall like, bro, what? Bro, what? I've literally been waiting in queue all day, so I'm sitting in the uh, Hall of Legends while I make this video so I don't have to log out. Thank you, Grobulus. Thank you so much.